And weirdly, up there near Cusco, we have this curious stonework, and we also have it at Alakahoyuk in Turkey. Exactly the same kind of thing. Is this a coincidence? Or is there something going on behind the scenes of history that we've not been fully informed about yet? Imagine a time long before the majestic pyramids of Egypt ever touched the sky, a time when early humans were just beginning to leave their mark on the earth. Nestled in the rugged landscapes of southeastern Turkey lies Gobekli Tepe, an awe-inspiring archaeological site that predates Egypt's ancient wonders by over 6,000 years. Uncovered less than a century ago, Gobekli Tepe challenges everything we thought we knew about the dawn of civilization, suggesting that the blueprint for advanced human societies was drawn up not in the shadow of towering pyramids, but within the mysterious stone circles of the world's first temple. Gobekli Tepe's strategic location in the Jermus mountain range not only offers a stunning panoramic view of the expansive Haran plain below, but at an altitude of about 760 meters, it also provides a naturally defensible position. This area is historically significant, having played a key role in the dawn of human civilization. The site was first encountered in 1963 during a survey by Istanbul University and the University of Chicago, but its true importance wasn't immediately understood. At that time, archaeological methods primarily focused on identifying sites that showed obvious signs of settlement or fortification. Gobekli Tepe, with its large, freestanding stone structures that lacked any residential or defensive characteristics, did not meet these criteria. The visible limestone slabs, enormous and roughly worked, were mistaken for natural formations or primitive grave markers rather than elements of an advanced structure. This led to its initial dismissal as a site of medieval or even older graves without further investigation. Moreover, there was a cultural bias towards sites that could be linked to known historical narratives or civilizations, and Gobekli Tepe's carvings and constructions did not immediately suggest any connections with the well-documented Mesopotamian cities or other known ancient cultures of the region. The site's fortunes changed in 1994 when Klaus Schmidt, an archaeologist known for his expertise in Neolithic sites, revisited the overlooked mounds. Schmidt, having previously worked at Navali Sori, a site with similar, albeit less sophisticated, T-shaped pillars, recognized the potential significance of Gobekli Tepe's unique pillars. He saw that these were unlike anything found in Neolithic settings at that time. Starting in 1995, Schmidt directed systematic excavations with a meticulous approach aimed at understanding the cultural context of the site rather than just cataloguing its artifacts. He proposed that the monumental stones were part of early ritualistic practices, a theory that shifted the narrative of prehistoric research. Following Schmidt's death in 2014, the excavation and research at Gobekli Tepe have continued under the guidance of the German Archaeological Institute and the San Liurfa Museum. Their ongoing efforts have been crucial in piecing together the site's complex use over time. An often drawn comparison is between Gobekli Tepe and Stonehenge in England. While both are megalithic structures from the Neolithic period, Stonehenge, which was built around 3000 to 2000 BC and features astronomical alignments, is significantly younger than Gobekli Tepe, which dates back to around 9600 BC. This nearly 6,500-year difference highlights Gobekli Tepe's place as one of the oldest temple complexes ever discovered, suggesting that the capabilities and cultural practices of early Neolithic societies were far more advanced than previously believed. Unlike Stonehenge, which served as both a burial ground and for celestial alignments, Gobekli Tepe appears to have been used purely for ritualistic purposes, with no evidence of permanent settlements or burials. This indicates that monumental religious structures could have predated settled agricultural life, challenging previous assumptions about societal development during the Neolithic era. Radiocarbon dating at Gobekli Tepe offers a captivating look into the early Neolithic period, identifying it as one of the earliest examples of monumental architecture. The site began construction around 9600 BCE at the close of the Pleistocene epoch, a time marked by significant climatic changes that likely spurred the development of agriculture and more settled societies. This transition from a hunter-gatherer existence to agrarian life is pivotal in understanding human evolution, 
Gobekli Tepe wasn't built overnight. It evolved through multiple construction phases over centuries. Each phase tells a story of different eras and uses, reflecting varied ceremonial or social functions. Signs of intentional burials of earlier structures at the site suggest complex ritualistic behavior, hinting at a sophisticated understanding of religious or cultural practices. The architecture of Gobekli Tepe is both monumental and unprecedented for its time. The site is composed of multiple enclosures, each centered around T-shaped pillars arranged in circular and rectangular layouts. This suggests an early form of architectural planning, aimed clearly at serving ceremonial or ritualistic purposes. The pillars themselves are believed to represent human figures, as evidenced by carvings of arms and hands, suggesting they portray deities or ancestors. In addition to the anthropomorphic pillars, Gobekli Tepe is adorned with a variety of motifs. Dynamic and realistic depictions of animals such as foxes, lions, scorpions, vultures and cranes suggest a deep familiarity with the local fauna. These carvings, alongside abstract and geometric symbols like concentric circles and zigzag patterns, may have held spiritual or cosmological significance. Human figures also appear in the carvings, often emphasized with exaggerated features such as arms or belts, possibly representing mythical figures or ancestors. These motifs were likely central to the site's function as a ritual center, with animal depictions possibly serving as clan totems or spiritual protectors. Gobekli Tepe is known to house more than 20 temples, although only a few have been fully excavated. The use of ground-penetrating radar and other survey methods has identified these structures, but limited excavation has been intentional to preserve the site's integrity and allow for ongoing research with advancing technologies. The construction of such massive and intricate structures would have required a highly organized effort, likely involving communities from across the region. This suggests a level of social organization and cooperation previously not attributed to societies of that era. This continued effort to understand Gobekli Tepe helps us not only preserve its historical significance, but also gradually unlocks the secrets of our ancestors' way of life, providing invaluable insights into the dawn of human civilization. Zatalhoyuk, another Neolithic site in Turkey, provides a fascinating contrast to Gobekli Tepe. Dating back to around 7100 BCE, Zatalhoyuk is regarded as one of the world's first urban centers, known for its densely packed cluster of houses without streets, where entry was typically through the roofs. Unlike Gobekli Tepe, which seems to have served exclusively ceremonial purposes with no signs of permanent settlements, Satalhoyuk was very much a lived-in community. This distinct difference underscores the varied aspects of Neolithic life, illustrating Gobekli Tepe as a center for ritual and gathering, while Satalhoyuk represents aspects of domestic life and urban organization. The discovery of Gobekli Tepe has profoundly impacted our understanding of early human societies and their development. Traditionally, it was believed that significant architectural projects emerged only after the onset of agriculture, when societies became more sedentary and had the resources to build complex structures. However, Gobekli Tepe challenges this notion by suggesting that such large-scale constructions might have predated and even possibly encouraged the development of agriculture. The site's need to assemble large groups for rituals or communal activities might have been a catalyst for innovations in food production and storage, accelerating the shift towards agricultural societies. An intriguing theory about Gobekli Tepe is its potential use for astronomical observations. Similar to how Stonehenge is aligned with solstices and equinoxes, it is believed that the circular enclosures and T-shaped pillars at Gobekli Tepe might have served as a prehistoric observatory. Such astronomical alignments would have been crucial for tracking seasons, which is an essential element in the transition to agricultural life. Comparing Gobekli Tepe with Easter Island's Moai also offers insights into the role of monumental architecture in ancient societies. Both Gobekli Tepe and Easter Island feature large, stone-built structures with anthropomorphic elements. The Moai statues are thought to represent ancestors overseeing their descendants, much like the T-shaped pillars at Gobekli Tepe may symbolize mythological beings or clan ancestors. The requirement for complex societal coordination to construct these monuments suggests that, despite being worlds apart, both sites served similar functions in their respective societies, 
facilitating social organization and fulfilling religious or ceremonial needs. This parallel underlines a common thread in human civilization, the use of monumental architecture as a focal point for community and spirituality.